What up folks, Alex here, I hope you're all good. Welcome to this week's video. And in this one, I'm gonna show you how to make this cool little animated sidebar that looks something like this. Now we're gonna do it within Fusion, and I am gonna focus on that sidebar. However, the skills that you learn are really, really useful for creating all sorts of things. You can use the exact same technique for creating title screens, nice looking backgrounds, call outs, or even lower thirds. So it's really, really useful. Not only that, I'm also gonna show you how to retime the animations using the keyframe stretcher. And lastly, I'm gonna show you how to create a generator file from that Fusion composition. The generator will be available from directly within the effects library on the edit tab, and you can customize it as well directly within edit without having to jump into Fusion. Now I've actually made the generator available to download. If you don't wanna make it yourself, you can download it from the link in the description below. Right, with all that out of the way, let's jump into Resolve and take a look, shall we? So here we are, end of inch Resolve, and we're on the Edit tab. Now I've already set up our timelines, we're ready to go. So the first thing we need to do, click on the Effects Library, expand the toolbox, we're going to go to Effects, and we're going to grab a Fusion Composition. And we're just going to drag that and add that onto our timeline above our footage like so. Now the first thing, you don't need this fusion composition to be particularly long, just a couple of seconds. So I'm gonna make mine about four seconds long. Now if we just put our playhead over our fusion comp, you can see all we get at the moment is a black screen. Don't worry, that's expected, we're gonna fix that in a moment. So with your playhead over the fusion composition, jump into fusion. And hopefully you should have a screen that looks something like this. Don't worry if it doesn't look exactly the same. The main thing, make sure that you've got your nodes open. They look like this down here. And then also make sure that you've got your inspector open by clicking in the top right hand corner. So we've got our nodes down here. The first one, the only one we've got at the moment is our media out one. We can click and we just move that wherever we want it. Another quick tip, use your middle mouse button. You can just move this canvas around by clicking and dragging. It just makes life a little bit easier. So as I mentioned, the Fusion Comp at the moment is just a black background. There's nothing else to it. So that's the first thing we need to fix. And what we want to do is to make it see through so we can see all the other footage underneath. There's a nice, quick, easy way to do that. We're gonna grab a merge node, which is this one here on the shortcut bar here. So we're gonna grab a merge and just drag it down to the left of our media out. And then we're gonna grab a background node, which is this one over on the left. Just drag that to the left as well. And then we're just gonna connect our background by clicking on the square, drag it over to the merge, and then for the merge to the media out. Now a merge node just allows you to connect two different things together. So you'll have a foreground and a background. And then the background node allows you to change the color of that background. So if we click on the background in the inspector, you can see we've got this little color picker here and we can just move that around and pick whatever color we want. We actually want this to be transparent or see-through. So put that right down to the bottom so it's completely black. And then down here, you've got alpha. Alpha at one means it's opaque, so you can't see through it. So if we just reduce that all the way down to the bottom, we get this checkerboard effect. And that means that it, that is now see-through. So if, if I was to jump into the edit tab, we haven't got a black screen anymore. We can actually see the footage underneath our fusion composition, which is perfect. So now we can start building our shape. Now that again is really easy to do. We're going to grab a rectangle just from here and drag this above our merge node. We're going to grab another background because we need a background color for that rectangle. And then we're just going to join the rectangle to the background and the background to the merge. So now we've got our actual see-through background, which you can see here. And within that, we've got this rectangle, which is currently colored in black. Now we've got two background nodes, which can get a little bit confusing. So I'm gonna give background two a click. And I'm gonna hit F2 on my keyboard to bring up the rename tool. And I'm just gonna call this one shape color or something along those lines and click on okay. Now with that shape color, Selected in the inspector, you can just pick whatever color you want this shape to be. So we can just move this around and pick a color. Now you've also got this type where it says solid color. You can change from horizontal, vertical, four color, or gradient. Vertical is a nice one. You can then pick from two colors and it'll just do a nice little fade between the two. So I'm gonna go with a, a nice light blue and white, a bit more blue, something like that for a nice modern pastel look. Once you pick the color, we're gonna click on the rectangle one. And now we just need to change this to be whatever shape we want it to be. So I want that sort of bar on the side which I can display information on. So over here on the right, we've got the width and the height that we can adjust. We've also got things like the corner radius, the angle, and then the center, we've got the X and Y 
properties. So I'm going to put my height to be 1 because I want it to fill the screen. I'm just going to experiment with my width until I've got it about right. 0.25 seems to work. And I'm just going to put it in the place I want it to be, which is over on the left, about there, something like that. Cool. So now we can start animating. So I want it to start at zero, like so. Open up, stay like that, and then close back down at the end. So this is really easy to do once again. So underneath the preview window here, we've got this little timeline, and I can just move this little red bar all the way from the left to the right. So we're going to go right over to the far left, which is our zero mark over here. Next to my width, I'm just going to hit the little diamond here to add a keyframe. And I'm going to set my starting point, which I want to be zero. So you can't actually see it at this point. Now, I'm going to make this animation about a second. I'm working with 25 frames per second, so yours may vary. But I'm just going to move over on this timeline to 25 frames. So you can see it here. It also tells you just over here. And then I'm going to adjust my width to be whatever I want it to be, 0.25. Now I'm going to go right to the end, and as I say, I've got 99 frames, so I just need to come in from that 25 frames, which is going to be 74, and then we're going to just click the little diamond to add a keyframe, but we're not actually going to change anything. We're going to put this right to the very end, and then we're going to reduce that down to zero. So now we're going to start off at zero. At 25 frames, it's going to be fully open. It will stay where it is, and then it will close towards the end. And if we hit the space bar to play, perfect. That's looking about right. But it's a little bit linear, it's a little bit boring, so we need to just change the way it animates to give it a little bit more life, make it look a bit more professional. And we can do that using the spline tool. So in the top right hand corner here, you've got spline. Give that a click and you'll see this appear. Now we've only added those keyframes at the minute for the rectangle width, so we just tick that box and then we can see the keyframes here on this graph. If you don't see them or it's really small, zoomed out, just click on this icon here and it'll just put everything in the right place. Now, as you can see, we've got some really harsh edges and that's just as the shape is changing, it's doing so really abruptly, which is why we're seeing these linear animations. So what we need to do, click and hold your mouse, select these bottom two like so, and then just hit S on your keyboard and it'll just put a nice little curve in those. Now you can't really do the same for the top because it likes to do weird things. If I just demonstrate, it does that, which isn't gonna work for us. So the easiest thing to do, click on one, hit the S key, and then grab this top handle and just bring it down so that you need to make sure that you've got a flat top at the very top. So something like that. And I'm gonna repeat the process for the one on the right. Hit S, drag that down. So we've got a completely straight line at the top. And job done. Now if we hit play, pops open and then closes and looks much nicer. So we can get rid of our spline tool now. One last thing I like to add just to really sort of sell the effect, make it look a little bit nicer, is a drop shadow. Now a drop shadow doesn't appear on this list. So what you wanna do, holding the control or the command key if you're on Mac, hold control and then hit space to open this select toolbox. And then we're gonna find the drop shadow by typing in drop. We'll give that a click and then we'll click add. Now, depending on what you had selected, it may just fall into place here or it may randomly appear over the side like mine has. Don't worry, give it a click, hold your mouse, drag it over this line, then hold the shift key until the line changes color like so, and then release, and it'll just drop right into place like that. Now, if we give the drop shadow a click, you can already see it's added this little shadow here on the preview window. But then we've also got all these different options. So we can adjust the strength, we can adjust the angle, we can make it whatever we want, the distance, the blur. Have a play with that again until you're completely happy with how that looks. Now, if I shoot back into the edit tab, we can have a quick preview. If I go to the very beginning, hit play, it pops open, stays where it is and then closes at the end. We've got a drop shadow. We've got our nice little gradient color. Works really well. The problem at the moment is we can't adjust that length. It's always gonna be that long, which isn't perfect for what we want. So this is when we start playing with the keyframe stretcher. So let's shoot back into Fusion. We're gonna hit our control and space again. And this time we're gonna type in keyframe and we've got this keyframe stretcher. We're gonna add that in. And you wanna put it between this merge 
and the media out like so. Now the keyframe stretcher allows you to stretch out animations so that you can retime them, you can put them on any projects and they'll just work as they're designed to. So give it a click. Again, inspector, you've got source start, source end, and then stretch start and stretch end. Now it looks complicated, but it's actually really easy. All you want to do, make sure that your source start is on zero, which it will be by default. The source end will be 120. What you need to do is to make that your last frame. So I've got 99 frames in this one, so I need to type in 99 in there. And then the stretch start needs to be wherever you put that keyframe. So if I click on my rectangle node, I can see I've got these little white marks on my timeline. So I can see my first one is at 25 and my second one is at 74. So if I go to the keyframe stretcher, I need to put 25 in there and then 74 in there. And that's it. So now if we go to edit, if we hit play, pops open and closes again. However, if we stretch that fusion comp, put it wherever we want it, hit play, it'll open, it'll stay open all the way through until we get to the end and then close, job done. So you can make that as long or as short as you like, really useful for doing different things in different projects. Now, if you want to actually save it for future use, there's a few ways that you can do it. One of them, you could just literally drag this fusion composition into a power bin and then it's there, you can just drag it on and it's ready to go. What I actually like to do, if you're using DaVinci Resolve 16.2, you can create a generator. So it will always sit within your effects library, dead easy to get to, and you're never gonna lose it. So to do that, again, it's actually quite simple. We're gonna shoot into Fusion. On our nodes, just click and drag and select all of your nodes with the exception of the media out. You don't need to select that one. So we're gonna select all of the others. We're gonna right click on one of the nodes. We're gonna to go to Macro, and then Create Macro at the very top. And your Macro Editor screen will appear. In the macro name, just give it a name. So I'm gonna call this sidebar. So if I wanna add this sidebar in the future, I may wanna change the color of it, depending on what I'm doing. And rather than having to jump into Fusion, you can make it so that you can make those changes within the Edit tab. And all you need to do is tick the relevant boxes. So this is where renaming our background to shape color makes things way easier. So I'm just gonna minimize this merge one. We're gonna find the shape color and just expand that. We can minimize image because we're not worried about that. We want the color. And then you've got a bunch of boxes here. All we're gonna do is tick all of these tick boxes, like so. So all of those tick boxes within the shape color and then the color area, make sure they're all ticked. And then we can go to file, save as. Now you need to save these to a very particular location. It's the C drive or wherever you've installed DaVinci Resolve, program files, Blackmagic, DaVinci Resolve, Fusion, Templates, and Edit. If you're on Mac, then the, it's a different path, but there are details for that down in the description. We're then gonna open this Generators folder, and we're just gonna save it within here. And then we can just close that down. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close DaVinci Resolve. Now I've restarted Resolve, so I'm back into it now. And what I can do now is open the effects library, I can go to the toolbox, I can go to generators, I can scroll down to my fusion generators, and I should have one in here now called sidebar, because that's what I called the macro. I can just drag that onto my timeline above my footage. And now if I hit play, I've got my little sidebar that just appears and disappears. I can lengthen it to be whatever length I need it to be. And if I click it, open the inspector, I've got this fusion tab, I've got all of my colors. So I can just change the color now. Let's make this one black and red. I've got this really nicely animated, customizable sidebar. If I go to titles, let's just grab a text box and put that on there somewhere. I can move that over here, type any text, use it in loads of projects. And it's just a really nice way of doing title screens, pop-ups, call outs, or just displaying information of a product that you're talking about or a location or whatever you want to do with it. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. These key skills within Fusion are really handy and you can create loads of different things just using these handful of really useful little nodes. If you did enjoy this video, give me a thumbs up. Any comments or feedback or other things you'd like to see on the channel, please pop them down in the comments below. And if you're new here, you enjoyed this video, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button.
Thanks ever so much. Thanks ever so much for watching, folks. Take it easy. I'll see you next time. See ya.